What is that? I don't know. That was the speaker that I put the computer on. We're now on air, though. Yes, we are. Let me just double check to make sure it's working on YouTube. Um, so if anyone's here, we have like five viewers now, which is cool. Let us know who you are in the comment section, and we'll definitely keep track of who's here and who said they were going to come but then didn't come. Um, as always, the live stream is about, I don't know, two to three minutes behind everything. So if you have an urgent burning question, keep in mind that we're three minutes in the future. Right. So, <sighs> Sorry. Um, cool. All right. So it's starting. For the five of you who are here watching, this is going to be a social media live stream, social media focused. We have our expert social media strategists. We have Cade and Nate. And I'll just be here listening and moderating. And I'll probably learn some stuff, things as well. Uh, so we're going to wait, I think, for maybe three more minutes before we officially get started. Um, but if you have any questions that you'd like us to answer, in the meantime, you can totally just send them, put them in the comment section. There's a little section like, am I pointing the right way? I don't know. That way, I think, where you can leave us a comment, and we'll be sure to answer them throughout this live stream. It should hopefully take about 30 minutes of talking, and then we're going to open the floor up to any very specific questions you have about social media. Does that sound good, guys? Everything sounds good to me. Um, Jen, if you feel like adding anything or you know saying anything, you totally can. I mean, I don't will. feel don't feel like you know you can't uh, contribute because I know you can. Yes, uh, don't worry, I will. Okay. But this is this is your guys' time to shine. Chris Choice is here in the comment section. Yay, Chris! Um, you know, it's not cool that he's not joining us in the hangout. I think we should just give him a hard time. Chris. <laughs> you can just look at him in the office. <sighs> Join us on the hangout. He doesn't have to. He, he has other things to do. He's busy. He's really busy for you guys. The comment tracker actually is a little bit behind the actual... Nope. Yeah, because that's kind of frustrating. Did, I only have the one comment. Do you have... I just loaded the other three, other two. Did you hit refresh? How did no, you get that? I did not. Oh, gosh. I can't stop yawning, guys. I swear. I'm not tired. I am tired, actually. The lights yeah, are off. I. Well, it's nice in there when the lights are off. Well, that's true. So who's leading this bad boy? Oh, uh, Jen is. I am. We're waiting a little bit to have everyone. I just, we have six viewers. If you want to go with six, that's fine, too. Would you like to just go ahead and get started? Do you want to get the party started? Uh, what are our comments, sir? Comments? Uh, our comments say, hi, Chris here in the comments. Uh, salute from Unique Jubates and hi from Matthias from, uh, you know, they're all from Oh, I didn't, I didn't get that one. Maybe if I hit refresh. And Shell Show, Joe, uh, <laughs> said hi, everybody. So, well, we know we're going to talk oh. about Twitter for Joe. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. Definitely Twitter. Um, Tweeter. Tweeter. <laughs> so I guess it's 3.01. Everyone else is now officially late, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Like I said, mentioned before, if you have any questions, feel free to type it in that comment section. Do it. We're about three minutes in the future because the live stream is a little bit delayed, uh, but we will definitely get to you. So again, this live stream is social media focused, specifically on discoverability, reaching out and growing your audience and finding new audiences for your YouTube channels using social media. Um, as you all probably have met, or maybe like Drew has not met, uh, or Surf, I'm not quite sure how to say your name, but uh, this is, uh, let's introduce Cade. He is our social media guy. He has a show on Cartoon Hangover called Hungover with Cade. He has been a YouTuber since almost the very beginning, so he knows a lot of stuff. So, Cade, why don't you go say hi for the couple of new people? 
Sure. Um, hi, my name is uh, Kate Heiser. I do the social media here at uh, Cartoon Hangover and Channel Frederator. I run all of our social media accounts. I also uh, upload our YouTube videos and uh, manage our YouTube videos online. Um, yeah, if this is the first time we're meeting, then hello. It's good to meet you. Um, you know, hopefully you can join one of my uh, social media best practices. You know, we're doing two a month. Um, I know sometimes the times are kind of weird. If you have problems coming to those uh, social media best practices and you have not been to one yet, then email me, please, at... Uh, here, I'll even put my... Well, I don't want my email address or anything. But it's kate at frederator.com. And um, you can just email me, and we can schedule something um, so we can do like a one-on-one -on -one or something if you have any questions. Um, but again, we're doing the social media best practices twice a month. Um, this is a special dedicated social media um, live stream that we're going to be doing, and it'll be up on our channel after this is over. Um, yes, like Jen said, I've been a YouTuber from the dawn of time, so um, I know a lot about YouTube. I know a lot about social media, and I'm here to chat with you guys today about those things. And... Uh, person who knows a lot more about that kind of stuff is Nate Olson. He's right over, right over here. Hi, I'm Nate Olson. Wait. I'm director of marketing for Frederator. And um, I, uh, I came to social media um, because a long time ago I was a, I was a graphic designer for a minute and I did GIFs. And, that was the, and those, those GIFs ads in the late 90s went on websites. And later, the, you know, GIFs got repurposed in all sorts of interesting ways. But like my career went from just being a web designer who is interested in media kinds of things to doing websites to blogs. And then we started getting these socially connected blogs. And then that became Tumblr and WordPress and how do I get people on my blogs? How do I get, um, what, you know, what do I say on my blog? And so there was these issues of content strategy and a whole set of things like interactive advertising. And then, this, and then the true social media platform started to kind of creep up Facebook, the dominant player, how do we use Facebook, how do we use Twitter. And now at Frederator, we spend a lot of time trying to find ways to promote our content and get our, get our content and our fans, get, get our content to fans wherever they're at. And so we, we spend most of our time Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, YouTube is its own social network that should you know, be used and exploited to the limit. Google Plus and uh, Instagram. We flirt with we flirted with Vine. Our, our our boss is really on a Vine kick this week. We're trying to figure out Vine again. Um, but anyway. Those things. And I spend a lot of time thinking about the strategy of it and the mechanics of it and tracking the changes. So we're going to communicate some of that stuff to you guys today, try to help you understand what you can do to get your stuff discovered by the audience that's out there in the world that wants to know your stuff and is excited to see it. They just don't know where to find it. Um, and the first step you've taken is joining the network so that we can help promote you on our own social media networks. And as those grow, and then the reach influence of those social media networks grow. And as you guys have content that you're you know, that you're proud of, and that really draw people into it, will will be one channel. But you really have to find all the other places where you can be discovered. And that's most of the thrust of what we're going to talk about today: is how to make sure that your stuff is discovered, make sure that it's the most shareable that it can be, and that within this whole process of discovery and shareability, that you are getting the most efficient, effective use of social media that you're capturing those people and managing them well. And like many, uh, how many, Jen and Kate, how many people here on the Hangout have already done a social media Hangout with us? Uh, Kate? Kate does the social media Hangouts. Yeah, Kate, we can't hear you now. Kate, is your, Mute is is your my mic? Yes, it was uh, there you go. I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, because I didn't want there to be feedback or something. Okay. Um, no, honestly, I think it's just Joe and Matthias that have been in the social media. I'm pretty sure they're the only two. Um, yeah. I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. That's, that's Joe at the Shell Show. So we owe Joe at the Shell Show some. I know that he had talked about Twitter, and we'll talk about that. Yes. Um, okay. So anyway, Jen, where, where do you want us to start? I would like to start with 
I think it's a good idea to help them give them the tools and the ideas to help discover their audience. Like, yay, they just posted this amazing cartoon. They really like it. How do they know who to promote for? Like, who's going to like their stuff, and how do they find those people? Well, I mean, I, I'll speak to it for a little bit, and then I'll let Nate take over because I know he has a lot to say about it. Um, but basically, I think the first thing you want to do is know your audience. And it comes to, you start with YouTube. And you want to think about, who am I making these videos for? Who is watching my videos? Who is commenting my videos? What kind of people are these? You know, Are they 12-year-old boys? Are they 40-year-old women? Like, you know, who is your audience? Um, you know, the YouTube audience, you know, in general, is 13 to 24, I guess. You know, skews probably more towards the male audience, I would say. Um, a lot of them like video games. Obviously, we've seen that with PewDiePie. Um, so just think about you know who is on YouTube in general, but you know specifically your content. Who is watching your content? What kind of stuff do they like? What kind of stuff do they? Uh, what kind of stuff do they watch when they're not watching your videos? You know, uh, we think about this all the time at Cartoon Hangover. We know that you know our fans like Pokemon. Our fans like Animal Crossing. They like Doctor Who. They like um, everything on Tumblr. They like that kind of stuff, and so we kind of have that. You know, in Nate's terms, we have that dialed in. You know, we know what uh, we know what they're they're into. We know what they're thinking, and we know what's going on in their world. So, uh, with that in mind, we can find what platforms they're on. We can find what they're searching, what they're looking up, and um, what's going on in their life to uh, kind of post relevant content on our own platforms to sort of infiltrate uh, that. Um, I guess I have an example. Whenever E3 was going on. Um, this is a small example, it's just the first one that came to mind, but whenever E3 was going on, I know a lot of our audience is uh, paying attention to video games. And they were probably, you know, all watching the Xbox One release and the PS4 release conference and all this stuff, and, and so I said, hey, it'd be a great idea to tweet something out that's related to it, uh, you know, related to the E3 conference that's going on, and, you know, see what everyone says. And so, like, I forget the exact tweet, but it was something like... Um, you know, Xbox, because one of the kicks about the Xbox One is that you can talk to it. You can say Xbox on, Xbox TV, and it responds or whatever. And I posted it's something... always on, listening. Yeah, it's always listening. So I posted something on Twitter about, like, the Xbox being something like the Hollow John or something. I can't remember the exact tweet, but it was like, Xbox load butter lettuce fantasy or something like that. And that tweet, just because it was so relevant and everyone was talking about Xbox in that one moment, it got, you know, 200-something retweets, and it was just... I mean, it was just retweets and tweets, but like it's just that kind of um, that kind of attraction. Like, oh man, that that puts it in their brain. Like, oh, Cartoon Hangover is funny. You know, Bravest Warriors is funny. You know, that's cool that they are aware of this event that's going on. Um, just, just to for vocabulary reasons, we for we refer to events like these as tentpole events. Mm -hmm. So if you ever hear us say like, oh, you should program around tentpole events, what Kate just described is an example of that. Like Halloween is another example of a tentpole event. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Kate. Just no, that's okay. No, that that's just uh, one specific example I could think of, um, and that you know that gets into a whole other sets of things. But um, just to address the one question of how to find your audience, I think the first step is knowing your audience. So Nate probably has a lot to add. Um, so well, let me, well, well, Nate's thinking. Let me say, uh, YouTube Analytics has a great tool of like discovering who's watching your content. And if you go to youtube.com slash analytics and you're signed in, you can go to like the geographical locations of who's watching your content. We have a lot of non-US content creators in our network, and so it would be great to see how many people from the US are watching your content, or how many people from Venezuela, or Brazil, or all these other bigger places. And if, like, say, for example, Cartoon Hangover had, I, I don't, we have a lot of Brazilian views, Nate, for people, we have. Oh, cartoon here currently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we actually don't have that many Brazilian views, but we expect we think that we could have for a number of different reasons. Most of our international audience is, you know, because we have an English speaking product, is the UK, Northern Europe. Right. Uh, technically, Canada is international, but you know, we don't really treat. Yeah, Canon. Canadian. Mm. But, yes, but uh, Brazil and certain ports, you know, where there's. Certain parts of Latin America where there's a really strong adventure time audience, we get a little bit of traffic. Right. So because of that, we've been thinking about uh, 
dubbing our episodes in Spanish to help with that, to help get that reach and that audience and that discoverability. And we wouldn't have been able to find that out unless we went into our YouTube analytics and look up the geographical locations as well as the age demographics <laughs> and the male-female split. We have, I'm pretty sure we have a pretty even split on Cartoon Hangover. Maybe a lot more, a little bit more on the male side, but it's pretty even, which is pretty awesome, I think. So um, along those lines, like, you have to know who your audience is. And you have this interesting relationship with your audience. So uh, if you're, like, if you want to be an artist and you don't want to take input from anybody, you're going to make it exactly how you want to make it, then you should give up on doing it as a job. Right? Don't expect to make any money. If there's a chance that that will work out. That's awesome. You know? So if you're if you're if you are sitting there and you're like, you know what, I have this per this vision of what my cartoon should be like, it's gonna be exactly this way, and I'm gonna put it out there, and people can take it or leave it. That's awesome for you. We'd actually love to see that product. That being said, um, they might not find it. You know, if they might not, uh, you know, you might not make any money on it. You might not have made it in a format as in, in a way that people can digest it or make money. You know. They're willing to give you money for it, so it can't be your job. As soon as you want money, you have to think, I'm creating this thing, and it's for a market. It's for an audience. It's for a particular kinds of people, and, some, and most of your audience is going to share some commonalities among them. Um, there are very few media products and very few shows or TV movies or anything that appeal to lots of different kinds of people. Um, how should I say this? That don't... You know, like I think I've, there's the Napoleon Dynamite effect. Yeah. Napoleon Dynamite is this one exception where it basically broke the Netflix algorithm right. for recommendations so, because no one could figure out, no one could predict if you like Napoleon Dynamite, what else you would like. It, was, it would just defy it. And they put a million dollar bounty on uh, improving the Netflix algorithm 10%, and that's when they discovered this Napoleon Dynamite issue. And so that's one piece of content. But you know what? Napoleon Dynamite, it found its audience. Um, and you have to figure out where's my audience, what do they like, and how do I get in front of you know get in front of them a product that works over and over again. And they might not be like you. We we touched this up upon this in the social media where they hang out, so I don't want to belabor it, but they might not be like you. They might be someone exactly opposite of you. And that is a weird relationship. But you still, you know, you want to reach out to them where they are, process your cartoon in a, in especially in social media, you want to parse it out. In bits, in the way that they want to have it, and uh, you have to you have to figure out that tension. So, otherwise, you're not going to make money. So, along those lines, there is this. Uh, you're going to you know you can use YouTube Analytics. You can you can do set. I set Google alerts for my own pro you know for all the projects that I work on, and you can go figure out what a Google alert is. And what's great about a Google alert is that it shows you where your stuff shows up. So if I get a Google alert for Frederator, I get a Google alert for Bravest Warriors, I go check and see where it's posted. Where, you know, who is talking about us? And I add that list, that website, and those people to lists that we track and that we pitch directly, we spend time on them, you know, we try to find that stuff out. In the early days when you don't know, like no one knows about your stuff, you should submit it to, uh, you know, to websites that aggregate material. And there's a whole class of websites that are aggregators. BuzzFeed is an aggregator. A better one, in most cases, for most of our target demographic is Reddit. If you have a, um, we I mentioned last night in a, in a in a an event that we did that Cheeseburger.com is also a really good aggregator. There's lots of places that aggregate content, and if you submit to all of them and you get hits on a couple of them, then you get a sense of what edit you know the editors of those places what they like. And it does, and you can start generating more data for your analytics to track, and you can start getting a better sense. But you have to just keep putting content out there, managing those relationships. I have a I have a question. Nate. Sorry to I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm cutting you off, but it, I actually have a question just regarding um, these these news sites and these aggregators and stuff like that. Um, this is sort of social media, sort of YouTube, but would it be a good or bad or you know dumb idea to um, Gear, gear your content and create it towards a certain 
um, audience that's on a website like BuzzFeed or on, on a website like Cheeseburger or something like that. You know, if you were you're like, hey, I'm going to set out and make a video about, you know, top 11, you know, cartoon fails or something like that. You know what I mean? Like something that you think BuzzFeed, would, like would it be a bad idea to, you know, create something uh, and submit it especially for that? Like, I mean, I think that if you've established that the BuzzFeed audience, and, there, and BuzzFeed has a bunch of segments of it, you know, like they have, there's not one kind of person that likes BuzzFeed. But if you've established that those people that go to BuzzFeed like your content enough that they would subscribe to your channel, that they want to see more of it, then it makes sense to do what we'd call BuzzFeed fodder, right? You know, just you know, sets of things that uh, uh, your content remixed, reformatted in the way that those audiences on those uh, on a set, on a website like BuzzFeed um, want to digest it in, and uh, and you can rediscover it. But it's a waste of time if if you drive a bunch of traffic to your site and to your and to your cartoons, and if they get there and they're like, oh, I hate this, right? And they're going to downvote everything and they're going to hate on you. Now, as you put more and more content up there, and Google decides what you know, Google figures out who likes your stuff. Then there's other analytics, not just Google Analytics. Um, there are analytics in the ad serving um, tools. So there's Google AdWords is is Google's ad serving service, and they have a bunch of tools, keyword tracker, traffic estimator, and they're combining it all is changing. But some of those sites, you can type in your the name of your, your your cartoon or even your own personal name, depends on how you position your brand, and it will tell you other websites. It will tell you websites where you should buy ads. It will tell you other things that people are searching for. Like the other things that people who like you your stuff, what they search for, and as you, if you build up like on Facebook, we love Facebook mostly because one, Facebook is watch videos, but two, Facebook has this thing called Facebook Social Graph search, and if you, if you have enough people, you get, you get to a critical mass, and it's probably in the low hundreds of followers, maybe the dozens of followers, dozens of followers, then what you can do is uh, you can go on Facebook Social Graph and you can search. People who like my page, right, whatever your page name is, also like, and it will give you a list of all these other pages that they like. And you start to see, and it's not just your friends, right? It's other all these other people who are fans of your page that you start showing those other properties. And then you know, you know what? Oh my gosh, my fans, they love um, what was a surprise for us? It's been so long since I thought about it. Okay. Like Bravest Warriors. Was, was PewDiePie a surprise? Well, so we talked about the YouTube tools, but yes, Tubular Alerts. There's a, a service called Tubular Alerts, and you can you can subscribe to it. And actually, I think by nature of being in the network, um, there's some data that you get access to. But basically, the Tubular Alerts told us that people who like Bravest Warriors, they also like, we have an, we over, our audience overlapped with a channel called PewDiePie and with a channel called Game Grumps. And that immediately was like, oh, that's interesting. Because actually, PewDiePie, he's in Sweden, we have no connection with him. And in, the, and in the last year, he's blown up so hugely, it's not very valuable. Other than we used the knowledge that we learned about that like PewDiePie fans like our stuff to do a really successful paid advertising campaign, which is a topic for a whole other live stream. Right? Um, but basically, ran an ad campaign targeting PewDiePie fans, serving up thumbnails of Bravest Warriors, and it worked phenomenally well. And we game the system in a cool way. But that being said, we found out Game Grumps, you know what? We can find the Game Grumps. Uh, Ego Raptor, he's a friend of friends. So we can reach out to Ego Raptor. John Tron, who used to be on Game Grumps, you know, like he shoots his stuff nearby, so we can find him. We can do collaborations. We can reach out to him on social media. Uh, um, you know, so that that's interesting that it starts to feed into all these different ways, these promotional activities that you can get into, collaborations, co-promotions, all that stuff, but you wouldn't know that if you weren't looking and trying to find out who your audience is. Where do they go online? What other things do they like? And so we'll, we're, com we're compiling a list of those other tools, and in the next little while, we'll, be, you know, we'll send out to you links to all those tools on the Google Plus um, group so that you can start getting to use them, you know, used to using them. Uh, so Knowing your audience through analytics, through a little bit of research, you can also just ask people. 
right? Facebook loves you to do polls, but you can just ask in the in your you know ask for a comment. What's your favorite website, right? Where do you guys go? How did you find me? You know that's one of the most common ones. You do it sincere and authentically. People will tell you, right? They will tell you. I think this is like this. I think this is like that. And there might be other shows that you didn't that you weren't aware of. Sorry, Jen. That's okay. I was just going to say, and that bleeds into one of the YouTube best practices of being engaged with your audience. Like, if they feel engaged and if they feel like they you're listening and you're responding to them, they're going to like you that much more. So go right ahead and ask your audience questions. I mean, at first they might not answer because they're like, oh, is he really serious about this? Does he really care about my opinion? But yeah, you know, if you produce a community for them to be like, oh, they really care about what I have to say, they're much more likely to engage and you're going to get so much more information out of them that's going to be useful to you in the long run. Like, uh, I, yeah, I was, I was looking, Hikarian Animation said, it, you know, has a comment, would you say that there's such a thing as bad publicity? And I think that goes along with this thing that Kate was talking about earlier, which is um, there is such a thing as bad publicity, right? You, someone could spin your project and your and tweak your own brand, like you know, talk about you in per, personally, where we would turn off everybody from ever paying attention to you again. So you have to manage that somehow, and that's tricky to do. Um, you can also get the attention of a whole crowd of people who wouldn't like your stuff. And they'll just come and be miserable. Now, uh, who was it that we we got? We did an ad campaign. We got a lot of people on the channel sometime last winter, and they were all like, "Wait, why am I here? What is this about?" I can't remember. I think that was also PewDiePie. We were <laughs> well, we were doing a lot of ads saying, "Hey, PewDiePie pan, uh, PewDiePie fans, check us out," because apparently, according to our research, PewDiePie fans also like Bravest right. Warriors. But because there were so many PewDiePie fans, not all of them like Bravest Warriors, so they would click on that ad and be like, what is this? This has nothing to do with video games, nothing to do with PewDiePie. And they were, you know, they were upset. But the good outweighed the bad in that situation, I feel. Yeah. yeah. Yep, it definitely did. So, um, yeah. So d knowing your audience is huge so that you can do the research, so that you can find the places where your fans are at, who they are and what they do, so that you can go and do an outreach, right? Like you can do an outreach program. You can submit to those websites. Almost all of these aggregator sites, all these, every blog who talks about stuff, they have a way of submitting. Sometimes it's just contacting the moderator of the forum, sending an email to the owner of the blog, and you can find them if you look in contacts or if you look in the about sections. You just stalk them online. And many of the interns who come to Frederator, that's all they do for us, right? We, we call them social media inventory. We just, we go through, we identify a person, and we find out everything about them, what, where they tweet, you know, individual journalists, individual bloggers, individual whoever wrote an article about whatever, and then we, you know, we hit them up. And that's you know, segueing into, like, what you, the use of individual social media platforms. Twitter is where journalists hang out. So while our fans don't hang out on Twitter and, and don't engage with brands on Twitter and our experience for our, our, our brand personally, mm -hmm. a lot of these like technocentric, really into blogs and journalists to people, they are all they are on Twitter. So we follow them, we at reply them to pitch them stories, to pitch them news about various warriors. So hopefully that they just know that what's going on. Right? So that's. That's a technique for becoming discovered. Yeah, I mean, and even after that, like, you know, they'll follow us back at a certain point. Like, you know, if it's someone who's already covered our stuff and, like, is probably looking for something new from us to cover in the future, that, you know, those kind of people, they follow, like, thousands of people. You know what I mean? Like, they follow a lot of people. And so, like, if you tweet something out, like, Season 2 Bravest Warriors, you know, I have a feeling that they're going to see that and, like, oh, wow, I need to be covering this or something like that. You know, if they didn't already have a heads up that, They'll be following you, and they'll see it on their feed. So um, it's another way to be picked up, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I th Twitter for us is one of the one of the best ways to get access to journalists, and journalists are these influencers. So you know, discovery is finding aggregate. You know, just be becoming discoverable is having content that is awesome that you put out there to be on these aggregator sites. The journalists, you know, they they're technically news outlets are aggregators. You know. 
And so you want to do this outreach, do publicity outreach to, to journalists. Now, journalists can be really, it can take this bunch of people. Um, you know, some of you guys might have worked as journalists, but you know, they, they have their own sets of demands and their time and their attention, and they're really tuned into those demands. And so they might not want to cover your stuff until it becomes newsworthy. And so you have to decide what, what about what you're saying to them is newsworthy. And usually it's a timeliness issue. And so that comes back to this other principle we talked about, tent poles, topicality, timeliness. That's one of the main, that's one of the, the foundational aspects of any social media campaign is that you should, you have your content you're putting up. That actually, when you have a premiere or a new piece of content go up, that's timely, that's topical. People are tuned in to wanting to, the new, the novel. That's part of what is interesting. It makes it relevant right there. So, you know, you want to you want to think about these ideas and so timing of when you put stuff up is important. Don't yeah. So, I mean, again, sorry, just kind of going off what you said, um, the timing of things, like like we said, you know, finding your audience, knowing what they're what they're doing, where they're at online at a certain point in time, and just knowing where their heads are at. Um, you know, if if everyone's focused on you know one thing, you don't want to be like, hey pay attention to me that has nothing to do with everything else. Um, you know, I have another example of, you know, being topical and timely. Um, on the night of the Breaking Bad series finale, uh, we have this cat bug design. Um, it's called, it says Breaking Bug on it, and it has a picture of cat bug with oven mitts, and he's holding peanut butter squares, and it says, I am the one who cooks, which is, it's like a big Breaking Bad reference, right? And um, I blogged that picture at least, you know, a dozen times before, um, within the last year, you know, just on various places, you know, Tumblr, Facebook, etc. Um, you know, it, it got, you know, picked up and, you know, it'd be shared a little bit here and then. But, you know, whenever I did it an hour and a half before the series finale, um, it's, it's our second most shared and liked piece on Facebook um, and on Tumblr. Well, not on Tumblr, but it's up there on Tumblr. But definitely on Facebook, it's our second most liked and shared piece. And it's just because... I did it, you know, when everyone was on Facebook thinking about Breaking Bad, when everyone was talking about Breaking Bad, thinking about Breaking Bad, you know, all this, you know, stuff was happening about Breaking Bad, and that's all everyone was thinking about, and it's just because of the timing on that one piece. And again, I said, I've reblogged, I've shared, I've posted that picture half a dozen times, if not more, all over the place. Um, it's just that one day, that one time is when it, it really needed to be used. Um, and, so, yeah. And as animators... You know, you can make that kind of content. It doesn't have yeah. to be animated. Correct. Right? It can be a single image of your characters doing something that's relevant and topical. And you put out in a time, you know, in a timely way. So, you know, think about that stuff, especially, yeah. and and it, it should be authentic to you and to your brand. You know, we're not advocating that you just completely, you know, um, exploit yourself or your brand for every little trend. Right. That's your fans aren't going to like that, and you and that's something you have to figure out about your fans. Unless your fans do like that, and there are people who are like, "Yeah, bring it on. We love you know, anything." Like, "Oh, make your you know, let's yeah. do twerking now. Let's do whatever it is, right?" Right, like, right. So, and you can be ironic and all. There, there's any number of ways of handling it. We have to trust your taste to do it, but know that that's not one of those techniques that you can have in your bag. Well, I mean, there's always something. I, I mean, I would say there's always something going on. Um, in one like genre or you know topic, you know what I mean. Like if you're following like in in Joe's case, if you're following like superheroes and everything you have to do is with superheroes, you know, there's new movies that are superhero related, you know, coming up all the time. You know what I mean. You know, treat those as tent poles, I guess I would say, and try and plan your social media around um, you know Thor that's coming out. If there's a if there's a live you know a still you can take of like a Thor figurine in a funny scene or something and you can post that to your social media, people will love it when the Thor movie is coming out, you know? Um, that kind of thing, you know, is like if your if your animation has a lot to do with young adult movies, or not movies, sorry, just young adult like fiction and stuff like that, you know, Hunger Games this is another good tentpole, you know, so there's always stuff that's going on that you could be aware of and you could be drawing uh, connections to. I mean, think about it, the Bravest Warriors audience and the Breaking Bad audience aren't necessarily the exact same audience. In fact, they're they're pretty far apart. There's some overlap, definitely, but you know they're they're pretty different. But it just worked, you know. And so um, I think another part uh, comes in 
to play is your creativity. You know, how can you come up with one thing using another thing? You know what I mean? How can I merge these two brands into this one piece of awesome? And um, I mean, it's you know sometimes it's kind of tricky, but you know finding that magic and uh, making it happen that's that's just the magic of social media. That's what I do every day. So, so you know we talked about some principles of discoverability and of course of analyzing the audience. Does anybody have any questions about the stuff we talked about already? I see there's a conversation going on about the list of aggregators. You know, over the last year and a half that I've been working on Cartoon Hangover. You know, the ones that have been most effective for us, I've already put up there. Reddit, Cheeseburger, those ones, because that's where our, our, our target demographic goes to find new stuff. You know, for a minute, nine gag was all right, because but you know that flash in the pan. We're hearing that dig is back up and going for certain people, and so we're just trying to play with dig again. It's kind of been resurrected. You know, there's any number of ones, and so whoever handles your social media, and I, I'm going to make the claim that as a cartoonist, you might want to consider not doing your own social media, that you might want to bring on someone who, who does that and likes to think about that all the time and who's willing to play with you on those things because you make animation. I, I made a claim in a meeting last night um, about that maybe you shouldn't, you know, that, no, that no animator should be doing their social media. But actually, I, as I reflected on it, I think that every animator should have their own personal social media. It should be, and probably should be one thing, whatever thing you like the most, right? It's easy for you. You should have yeah. your Tumblr. You should have your Twitter. If it's Instagram, you know your one personal one that shows you that you're a human, and that you have other interests, and that you should have a separate set of social media accounts for your property. Now, property. I have a question about that because, as we know, Joe from the Shell Show, his entire thing is no one knows who Joe is. His personality is Shell himself. Would you still recommend that? Joe himself starts to blend that because I know he's expressed interest that he doesn't he wants Shell to be his own personality. Well, he should probably talk to this, and unfortunately, we're going to have this delayed, right? And some of the dynamics. But um, I've, I've talked to Joe a little bit about this. Um, you know, he because he also writes the show, right? He can speak the authentic Shell voice. I think it makes sense for him to blog as Shell. I also think, though, that he should do social media from, from his own personal account. Because what's happening is that there's a portion of your audience that, and it's, it's 10 to 20 to 30 percent of your audience, depending on the demographic of your audience, because sometimes, sometimes you have a geeky enough product that your whole audience is like what I'm about to describe. They all want to know every detail about everything. Mm -hmm. right? But most of the time what happens is there's a big bunch of your audience, they don't care. Right? They just like a cartoon. In fact, in many cases, they're not even remember the name of your cartoon. You know, <laughs> they're not going to subscribe. There's a big chunk. In our in our circumstance, there's probably 50 percent of Cartoon Hangover's audience. They barely remember that there's a stage a channel called Cartoon Hangover. They kind of know it as the cat bug show. You know, more power to them. They click on ads. Life is awesome. The other 50 percent, they care more. And some portion of it, they're going to stalk you and they're going to find you and they want to find you. And you want to be found to some degree, unless that's your persona, which is to not be found at all. But that actually makes a lot of people suspicious, and it can be weird unless you play it right. And that's a whole other game. So for like, what I'd recommend is that you have accounts for your show, however you want to handle it, and that you maintain at least one very authentic personal account. That's your own brand name. I think WarrenEllis.com. Warren Ellis is a very well-known graphic, um, graphic novelist. And he has his own website, right? And it's a platform for him to talk about whatever. And he's got a huge chunk of his fans. They go to Warren Ellison for everything. For them, he's like a prophet. So that's that's more that's a lot of power. He can launch multiple properties from his WarrenElse.com. Um, and people want to know that they can get a hold of him. Same with um. Oh my gosh. The Avengers guy, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer guy. Who's that? What's his name? Josh Whedon. What? Yeah, it's Josh Whedon. He has his yeah. own, you know, website and his own fan. Right. So give your fans a little bit of love, just a taste mm -hmm. of it. You know, blog someplace, tweet from somewhere, somewhere where they feel like they can they can own a part of you. That's one thing. But right. have an official accounts for your for your properties. This this also like.
because a lot of you don't have, haven't sat with me on the YouTube best practices. This is leads to you have to treat your hardcore fans very well because your hardcore fans, they're the ones who are going to share with their friends, their family. They're the ones who are going to like shout your name from the mountaintops. And if you don't treat them as something special, they're they're going to feel ignored and they're not going to promote you as hard. You want you want your own little private army. And yes, sometimes they can be annoying and demanding and really intensive but you really need that hardcore audience to love you and you need to give them a little extra special love and care here and there. Okay, what are some of the ways that we give our hardcore fans a little extra love on uh, social media specifically? We, we, uh, we retweet people all the time, almost daily. Um, you know, we get a lot of at replies. We get a lot of people just talking about Bravest Warriors. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to comment on people's pictures on Instagram and it's people that do not know it's coming at all. It's really funny because uh, just yesterday, I mean, I, I do it almost every day, but there was, I was going through the Cartoon Hangover tag and the Bravest Warriors tag on Instagram, and there was this person who drew a cat bug on one of their tests, and uh, they were like, you know, oh, I, I gave my teacher a present on, on my test today or something like that. And uh, we commented something like, uh, I forget what I said, uh, how, how'd it go? Did you get an A plus or something like that? And then they freaked out and they're like, oh my god, Cartoon Hangover, you know, wants to know if I got an A plus and saying all this stuff. So like, it got them really excited that, you know, I acknowledged that they, they were, you know what I mean? Like, so they're going to draw Catbug on the next test or something like that. So it's something really small and easy that you can do to get those fans excited. And, and it, it, you know, we have people take pictures of them wearing their shirts and stuff like that, and I, I go through and I like their photos from the Cartoon Hangover account, and they're like, wow, Cartoon Hangover likes likes my photo. That's really cool. That makes me feel really special. Again, on Twitter, um, you know, we, we retweet them. You know, if they're saying, oh, I'm watching Bravest Warriors. This is such a great show. I was like, whatever. That's a retweet, you know. If this person likes it, you know, let's let's show that there's people out there that do like Bravest Warriors, and everyone else can see it. Um, similarly, uh, if that's a word, uh, I think I said that right stumbling over my words. Uh, on Tumblr, we reblog fan art. Um, you know, we get submitted a lot of fan art, and uh, some of it's fantastic, some of it's okay, but we reblog almost all of it, um, as long as it's appropriate and it makes sense. Um, yeah, we'll reblog it, you know, we'll shout out to the blog, that kind of thing. Um, we have know. fan art Fridays. Did we you have fan that? art? We, yep, yeah, we have fan art Fridays on uh, Instagram, on Tumblr, we, we sometimes do it on Facebook, um, but it, it's just a big shout out to your, your blog, and it, it's mostly through a call to action, and um, that might be something you have to do to get the ball rolling. You know, like, hey, uh, sometimes we do a Twitter, you know, a tweet, sorry, or a Facebook post and say, hey, send us screen caps of your favorite moments from Bravest Warriors or, you know, our series, whatever your series is. Send us screen caps from your favorite moments, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll retweet a few. You know what I mean? And not only are they sending us screen caps from our own show, but then we're retweeting our own content from somebody else. Like, I don't think it gets any better than that. Like that, it makes the most sense to me. Um, so and yeah, that's a that's a good way to do it. I mean, there's there's lots of different ways you can do it. Um, you can always have contests, giveaways. Um, you know, on uh, let's see, see, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram. Just real quick, going back to the fan mm -hmm. art Fridays, you guys in the in, in our network, if you want to send us Bravest Warriors fan art, we will m be more than happy to promote your fan art for us, and that's a way to get your foot in the door for people to discover your work and your other, it's like, oh, he did this yeah. awesome cat bug art. What else does he do? You know, that's, be very happy to promote anything like that through Cartoon yeah. Hangover. Yeah, just recently, um, just recently, Rai Spirit, I think I'm saying that right, uh, he did a Bean Puppy Cat speed painting. Um, he actually did a video about it, um, and uh, it's awesome. It's really great. And he just wanted to do it because he liked uh, being, pup being puppy cat so much that he was inspired to do the speed painting. And so, like, you know, I had no idea he was going to do it beforehand, but, like, I saw it. It was submitted to the being puppy cat Tumblr. I was like, wow, that's great. I planned on, you know, blogging it anyways. And then I realized, whoa, he's in our network. Cool. You know, that, you know, that made me even more excited. So, um, yeah, the fact that it was being puppy cat gave me an excuse to blog it to the Cartoon Hangover. Now, I'm not saying you know, go out there and make Bravest Warriors fan art, you know, just to, you know, make stuff relevant. But, like, you know, it's it's an idea, you know. It's something that you can try and, you know, check out. So, um, yeah. And actually, you should consider doing that for even for all the properties that you love and that your fans love, right? So once you know who your fans are and what else they like, and if you find, have a crossover piece that you can come up with, you know, just like that Breaking Bag t-shirt, 
and you do it in your own style, people can get really behind that. You know, viral like having a viral piece of content is one part of a promotional campaign. You can't, you know, having an all viral strategy doesn't work, and it's actually not good. You're going to get a lot of that less effective attention. Um, but having one piece that goes big for you, that's great. And if, and if a bunch of people come to your social, you know, onto your sites, onto your platforms, and they see your other stuff and they love it, then, you know, then that's really great. In fact, one of the things is you need to be paying attention to your social media so that you can you can jump on events, right? Mm -hmm. So we paid, and to some degree myself, but Kate spends 24 hours a day on social media. Right? We we use a, a software called Hootsuite, and it helps us keep on top of all of our social media platforms and our accounts. It mm -hmm. gives us notifications. Like I don't even look, like right now, I don't look at all the notifications, but if I don't hear notifications, I know Cade's not doing his job. Right? Like I'm not getting notified that stuff is going on. Then it's like, what's going on? Why yeah. aren't we getting chat? You know, like why aren't these things going on? Mm -hmm. I look at my little phone and I say, I don't see 1,200 notifications. <laughs> 1200. Like, oh my gosh. Why are we, what's going on? Uh, you know? No, uh, no, it's very true. Um, you know, it, social media is like a full time job. You know, like you, you need to be aware of things. Um, but it's funny because, like, I have all the social media, you know, applications on my phone and stuff. And just yesterday, I tweeted from my own Twitter account. I was like, you know, I forgot that I even have Twitter on my phone. Like, because I don't pay attention to my Twitter feed, my personal Twitter feed. I'm constantly on the Cartoon Hangover one. I'm on the Bravest Warriors one. You know, I'm looking at the Channel Frederator, but, like, you know, Crazy Cade. Like, I never go on there, honestly. And, and the Instagram account is the same thing. Like, uh... My girlfriend's like, you know, you don't like my photos. And I'm like, I don't log into my Instagram. I haven't posted a photo in over a month. You know, she posted one or two Instagrams a day, and she's like, you never like them. You know, why don't you like them? And it's like, I love your photos. They're great. I just don't ever log in. So sometimes when I log in, I go back and like all of the photos because I feel bad. But what, you could, what could happen is that something that you've done hits, and you get a bunch of traffic, and then that's this golden moment for you to promote your stuff, right? You've got this new people. They just signed up. You know, they've they they they've liked, they subscribed to your channel. You want to give them something to you know to set the hook. Yeah. Right? For using a fishing metaphor. So you, that's why you want to pay attention. Um, it, or you're just missing out on opportunities. Yeah, do whatever you want to do, but there's an opportunity there. Sure. Um, I want to remind everyone that you totally can ask us more questions. We're probably going to keep going for another 15 minutes. Um, you can ask them now, but again, it's delayed, so we probably won't get the actual question for another three minutes. Um, but N Nate, why don't you talk about the easiest places to start to find audience, like friends and family? Like I know you have a whole philosophy about sharing and all that. Yeah, I, I uh, you know, for those some of you might have heard of this, and I'm, I'm this is I'm I'm polishing it, right? So I'm trying this out more and more. But um, for those of you who don't have anything, right? You don't have any followers on any account anywhere. The first thing you do is you put a piece of content up, and you invite your friends and family to follow you. I like we do like Facebook. You should create your own Facebook page. You should create it, and you should invite your friends and family to come and check out your Facebook page for your product and to follow it and to reshare and to share it. Now. If you put something up and it doesn't get shared, you have to ask yourself a set of questions. And the first question is, are my friends and family my target demographic? Are they the ones, are they a good representative sample of my audience? And if they're not, then that's, that's a really interesting thing. I would argue that in many cases, at least some of your friends should be, most likely they share a sensibility. Otherwise, you should be asking yourself a question about what friends do you have, right? You live this closet life. Um, so one of the things is, if they're not sharing it, then you maybe your content's not good enough, and that's real. Um, that's a very real thing, and you need to gauge it. And we're always like, oh my gosh, why did this not do well, right? Last winter, by the way, this, we put up a piece of content, and um, we it was an episode called Dan Before Time of Bravest Warriors. We really liked it, and we thought it would do really well. We we loaded up, you know, uploaded it, and the next day I was having I was in a presentation. I was talking to some licensees, people who I was trying to potential licensees, 
people who I wanted to give us money so that they would make products on Brave, about Bravest Warriors. And I knew how well we had been doing historically with all of our episodes, and I went to check in on how well, how many subscribers we had we had done, and I I told them, oh, I think we're up to you know 150,000 subscribers, whatever it was. And I checked, and we weren't. We were way below. We were way off our mark. And somehow, damn before time, wasn't doing well. And, and that made us all like, what? You know, maybe we're off or whatever. It turns out, because as we talked around in our community, and this is one of the things we'll talk to, we found out that YouTube actually had broken that day. It was YouTube's fault. And a lot of other people, other YouTube channels, they had the same problem we did. And to this date, Damn Before Time, which is a really good episode, actually still isn't doing as well as it should have. Mm -hmm. It never really got as much. So that's a, that's a side thing. So sometimes your piece, you know, like gauging the performance of a social media piece or one of your videos or whatever, you have to look at all the different factors before you make an assessment, you know, before you are confirmed in your assessment of why it didn't do well. Yeah. But let's say your friends and family didn't share it. They don't share your, your taste and all those stuff, and you need to go and find new friends, one of the things that you can do is you can get involved with the community. In many cases, they're fan communities of other things. We highly recommend that you go on and you be an active fan or an active participant in other communities. Do um, our community. It's, like, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so you've taken that step. You're in the Channel Federator Network. There is a community there. You can post things and get feedback. Mm -hmm. In many cases, you know, everyone's going to share it. That's a, super, it's a huge, uh, huge thing. Um, and most times you actually are already a part of several different communities. Um, some of the communities, alumni associations to any kind of school that you ever went to, right? And in most cases, those, those colleges or universities or schools, they have school papers. And you can pitch those journalists, and they will write an article about you. And just by the fact that you have a cartoon up and that you join the Channel Federator Network, those are newsworthy enough for school newspapers in many cases, and I'm actually happy to get on and provide a quote about you and about the future of YouTube or whatever. So you can, you know, you can pitch when you, when you pitch that. And that, that little piece, that gets out to thousands of people, in some cases tens of thousands of people, and if it's a good target for you, then what happens is you're going to get some fans. They're going to follow you. They're going to, and maybe they will share your content out. So churches, like, you know what, some, some quarters churches aren't cool, whatever. Just think about what your community is, your church, your synagogue, your whatever. They, they, the, those people, they might want to know about this, and they might get behind your stuff, and they might be really good proponents of your property. They just have to know that you're out and doing it. Yeah. You get out them and push it. You just have to think what communities. Also, I think, um, like, you never know what can happen. Uh, my son plays Dota, too, right, which is a game from Valve on Steam, and that was a mod of... Um, Warcraft 3, I believe, maybe Warcraft 2 even. And it just, it grew up a community of people who made a mod on a game and they got behind it. And it, get, it got so big that Valve came along and licensed it. Now, Minecraft can be that kind of community. You know, you just go and be involved with the things that your target demographic are involved in in authentic ways. And, and you can put up your fan art and you can say, oh, I'm an animator. And you will find more people who will come and find your stuff. And you're building this kernel of fans upon which all the other communities and stuff will grow. Cartoon Hangover had 7,000 subscribers a year ago, right? We have, we're up to just under 800,000 subscribers in a year. We didn't, we made some jumps, but almost all of that was just the technical accretion, right? Just adding on, little bit, little bit, iterative, step by step. Line upon line, right? Boom, 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 boom. So that's how these things grow. Sometimes they can go very fast. Sometimes they go you know, very slowly. Um, I would have taken PewDiePie growth, 900,000 subscribers to 12 million subscribers in a year. That's pretty awesome. Though, arguably, you know what? One of the things about um, PewDiePie or my, my, my current punching bag du jour is uh, Adventure Time. We track, all, we track all of our competitive and comparative properties. And when we start, first started doing this, Adventure Time had 1 million Facebook fans. And they're up to 8.8 .8 million Facebook fans, which is a lot more, in the same period of time that we went from nothing to 80,000 Facebook fans on Cartoon Hangover accounts. But when we look at 
are shares, all these other what we call engagements, shares and likes. Cartoon Hangover, I mean, Adventure Time posts on Facebook, even though they have 8 million and we have 80,000, they only get twice the number of likes and we often get the same amount of shares. Yeah. And that's really interesting. Our fans are as engaged as those fans are. Right? So that's, there's something to that that's important. But you just have to find your communities, find your fans, eke it out, get it out in front of other people so you can drive, you can tailor your, you know, your content, tailor your, your content strategy for your social media to engage those people. Go to the platforms. I'm, I, I know that a bunch of our fans for Cartoon Hangover are on Snapchat, right? I'm, this is, I'm going to take another chance to go run a Kate on this. <laughs> we, internally, we're arguing about the utility of using chat of, of Snapchat. Um, Why don't you explain really quickly what Snapchat is? Snapchat is um, what everybody used to sext, and that's why people can do it. But it's I actually, hope everyone knows what sexting is. It's a one-to-one -one shareable social network where the content actually expires. So you, you take a picture of yourself, you send it to your friend, it lasts for a certain amount of time. They keep changing how much time it lasts for, and then it goes away. Um, but it's a trend among our, especially the younger seg segment of our demographic, that are into Snapchat. We want to be there somehow. TK just doesn't want to get sexted all day long for work. Why I don't blame him, but I'm kind of paying him for that, so I'm not sure really, no, I'm sure. Um, um, I, we see some questions that we can now address. So. Yeah. Well, I, can I just, I just want to add really quickly, I don't want to repeat everything Nate said, because um, it was all really great, but I just want to add that, um, you know, Starting with your friends is where you need to start. And um, again, if Nate said you don't have any friends, whatever, you know, you need to make friends. And preferably, friends in the industry you want to be in. And in this case, it's the, either the animation industry or the YouTube industry. And so you need to have friends in the animation industry. You need to have friends in the YouTube industry. And if you don't have those, you need to get them. And how are you going to get them? You're going to get them by spending time on the YouTube website, youtube.com. Not sure if you heard of it. Check out videos. Check out animation videos. Again, start in our network that we have. You know, we have 70 people in the network. You can reach out to all of them, and you can talk to them and you know form collaborations. You know, like their stuff on social media, that kind of thing. Um, become genuine friends with them. You know what I mean? That's what I did on YouTube. You know, six years ago, and I still am friends with a lot of them today. And uh, they're great relationships. But it's just like you know. You know, we feed off of each other. You know, we have an I have an idea for a video. You know, I say, hey, you have an idea for a video. Let's collaborate. Let's make something cool. You know, teamwork, that kind of thing. And so that's what you need to do. Get out there, make some friends in the industry, and um, don't be scared. I was going to say, um, like Shasho says, I've you know he's got a certain number of subscribers on YouTube, but on Twitter, Twitter he has forty. Right. But he doesn't tweet that often. Mm -hmm. You know what? I, Twitter has limited utility. It really right? does. Most of what we do on Twitter is autopilot. You know, like, and like, right now, for whatever reason, journalists are on Twitter, and so they talk about Twitter all the time, and they just put out a report that Twitter has nothing to do with TV ratings. You know? Like, there is a big study, and they wanted to find out, and they're trying to assess it, but the, but the results were there's really not a one-to-one -one connection. The people on Twitter, they like to tweet about stuff, and they get super excited, but it isn't necessarily an accurate gauge of other things. So... Anyway, I wouldn't worry so much practically about Twitter. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, think about our numbers. We have 800,000 subscribers, and then we have 12,000 followers on Twitter. So honestly, 1,900 to 40, your numbers aren't too way, far off. We, we cast an actress who had 1.6 million Twitter followers. She posted one of our videos. It gave us 700 views. <laughs> it just goes... Cause you know, tw the Twitter feed is constantly changing, so yeah. only at a certain ever given point, someone's gonna see any of your tweets. Uh, you know, we're 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 rapidly getting to the end of this, and there's two things that I wanted to mention. One, we didn't talk about in terms of discoverability are hashtags. Mm -hmm. Hashtags, which are on Twitter and now are on Facebook, and Instagram, and on, on Instagram, are ways that people can find your content, and it's. You know, it's not less is more with tags. Like on, on Twitter, you don't have so many that you can play with. But on Instagram, go hog wild with the tags. Hog wild, yes. Because they don't really show up. And they're at Tumblr, too. Even though there's some discussion about the first five 
tags not showing up in t are the only ones that show up in Tumblr search, blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. You know, we just tagging is a big thing. And so what you want to do is once you've identified comparable properties, people who are doing things like we're doing, you go and you steal their tags. Right. That's, that's the number one, first thing that you should do so that you can get in on that tag chain. Because if you think about it from the, uh, the end user perspective, from the audience perspective, what are they doing? They see a piece of content. Oh, it's Adventure Time. Look, it's tagged. I'm going to see everything at Adventure Time. They click on it. What are they going to see? A whole list of, a list of things. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's Bravest Warriors and it's tagged Adventure Time? Why? Because it's also tagged Penn Ward and then they, you know, they find that stuff. They drill down on it. So you want to be involved in that. That's part of being discovered. Um, uh, what was the other thing you want to cover? Oh my gosh. I Hashtags. Hashtags. It was something very different. Um. No. Um, so anyway, that's that's a big one. If I remember what the other thing was, I will tell it. Uh, I have I have one thing that I'd like to add. Um, just something we haven't really talked about. We have a little bit, but just being consistent. Um, we can't be. You know, we can't say that enough. Um, it goes for YouTube, but it goes for social media even more. Actually, um, you need to post one thing a day somewhere online. Absolutely, one thing a day. If you can do that, then you're off to a good start. Um, Eventually, it needs to be more, but I think that's a good start. Um, whether it's on Tumblr, Facebook, you know, it could be the same thing just across these platforms. You know what I mean? Just get your stuff out there. Don't, you know, I don't want to yell at you and say don't be lazy, but don't be lazy. Um, like Nate said, if this, if you want this to be your career, then you need to put your stuff out there as much as possible. And I don't care if it's, you know, if you post one. Uh, if you post a screen cap from a previous video you did months ago, I don't care. Remind people that that video is out there and that they can go back and they can watch it and they can show that video to your friends and uh, their friends. Sorry, you don't want them to show it to your friends. That would you need to show it to your friends. Um, so yeah, post something online. If you need ideas for social media posts, email me. I have lots of ideas. That's what I do. Okay, I will give you ideas and then you won't have any excuses. Um, if you can come up with your own ideas, that's even better. But uh, yeah, you should post one thing a day. I mean, do do you disagree, Nate? What do you think? Oh, uh, I, at I, least. I, at least. Yes. Yeah. Absolute minimum. And then and then it really helps you guys get into the habit because a lot of I'm sure a lot of you like really want to do a good job. You're not sure where to start, but you, maybe it's not in the forefront of your mind yet. Like this is our job, so we work at this, and we uh, like it's in our brains already. But maybe for you guys, it's not the first thing you think of when you wake up right. in the morning, like, oh, what am I going to post today? I mean, so, that's what we think of, but it needs to become a habit for you guys to be involved and engaged in the online community. When you're finding, when you're looking through your communities, when you're trying to, when you're doing your research about who your audience are and where they go, well, one of the things that you should be prospecting for is someone to take over your social media, someone to be an advocate and help you, and you, sh you should find those people who do their social media really well for other brands and for other things and reach out to them in a private way and say, listen, I need some help. We have, a, we, one of our friends is a guy named, a friend of Frederick named Ben Lashes. And Ben is the, eight, he's the manager of all the cat name things, right? So, Nyan Cat, Keyboard Cat, Grumpy Cat. And Ben Lashes, he got that job because a family friend uh, needed, had this video on YouTube that was blowing up, this keyboard cat, this cat, you know, putting on keyboards. And Ben had been doing social media as part of this band that he was in that fell apart and he wasn't doing much. And the family friend was like, you know stuff about social media. Can you help me figure this out with this keyboard cat thing? And Ben did it. And now Ben is like the manager of all those memes. They're making, he's making tons of money. And he's helping these content creators, these content owners, to exploit their stuff in really effective, interesting ways. So you should watch out for those partners. Watch out for people who think about this all the time, who can help you out, who can help manage your accounts, who can do those things when you don't want to. Um, you know, so there's, or you're not, you don't have the capacity to because you're just trying to pay your rent and make your, and, and shoot for the stars, right? Yeah. So. All right. Do any other last minute questions from you guys? It's four o'clock. We're gonna about wrap this up now. Um, yeah. Nate and Kate, do you have any uh, last minute advice, words of wisdom on discoverability, helping them get their stuff out there? We talked a lot. We could talk for hours about things like this, but is there any 
Um, I guess, uh, you know, if, if this is my, you guys go ahead and put your questions in and then we'll answer them, but this is my last, uh, last few things that I want to say. Um, I would say, you know, try to take it seriously and try, try to be creative and do things, you know, do things that you see other people doing, you know. Um, if you see people, you know, posting a lot of fan art, like Pokemon fan art is really popular right now. If you, if you want to jump on that, if you feel like your audience uh, loves Pokemon, then do it. If you feel like you have an art style that can fit Pokemon or, you know, if you, you know, whatever. Find those crossovers, that kind of thing. Try and get your stuff out there. Um, I really just can't stress enough to be creative because, um, you, you know, it's one thing. You see, like, you see these uh, paid promotions on Tumblr of, like, you know, I saw one of... Um, Michael J. Fox and promoting his new show and he's like doing this gif and he's like spinning or something and like as much as I love Michael J. Fox but like the gif was just terribly lame and it was like so boring and it's like come on really like you know just recently um, they've been doing this viral marketing campaign for Carrie and it was pretty cool like I actually came across the video just randomly on Tumblr um, how they had like this coffee shop set up for like this uh, this girl like doing telekinesis and stuff and it, it was funny. Um, so just try and get creative with your stuff. You know, think about stuff that people are going to be sharing. And um, yeah, that's all I have to add to that. And then, oh, start using Google Plus if you can every now and then. I wouldn't post every day on that thing. Um, just if you can, though, because it, when you uh, integrate your Google Plus profile with your YouTube, it will uh, people will start following you a lot more. We're already seeing a big increase on our Google Plus, and it's just there. But um, the cool thing about Google Plus is actually when you share with people who are following you and have liked your page, you can actually uh, enable your posts to be sent as emails. So that's kind of cool. Um, very useful because then you can contact people through their emails. Um, so yeah, just make sure you're kind of aware on Google Plus and you're, you have a profile there. Um, that's all I have to add. Um, we can answer questions now if you guys have any. Kate, do you want a moonlighting gig? I, I don't know, know what that means. He says he's kidding, mostly. I don't know what that means, either. Hey, what's uh, a moonlighting gig? It means that he wants to do some extra freelance work. Uh, oh, me? okay. Do you want to do a social media? Oh, it's me good. for... That's yeah, what he so, wants. You know, it's... Uh, before, as Cade's boss, I would say that he's welcome to do anything on his free time. But I'll tell you, Cade works all day long. Yeah, I don't... I don't <laughs> honestly, as, as much as I would say yes, yeah. I don't have... I, unfortunately, I do not have free time. Um, you know, we're we've been. You know, when it first started, it was um, managing Cartoon Hangover and Bravest Warriors, and then you know, Channel Freighter is starting to be thrown into the mix. And now I'm following all of you guys in the network, and I'm trying to monitor all of your social media posts, and I'm trying to promote it through uh, Channel Freighter. And actually, that's a good point. You know, if I do miss, you know, one of your guys' posts on Tumblr or Facebook or Twitter, you don't see it, you know, republished. Please just shoot me a quick one-line email with a link to your post. Um, and let me know, um, and I, I'll I'll repost it out there. But again, I, I don't really have that much time, you know, you know, managing Bravest Warriors, Cartoon Hangover, Channel Federator, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that, you know, what Craig just mentioned, give us like, it's like volleyball. Like, serve us awesome stuff on social media, and we will slam it out. But we can't <laughs> do anything unless you serve it up to us, right? So give us stuff, you know, give us stuff to read. I was gonna say, as a former. As a former volleyball player, you kind of butchered that yeah. a little bit. <laughs> it's close. Awesome. It's called it roofing. When you block the ball, you roof. Anyway. I don't want to roof. I want. I want to be set up. You know, I want to be set up. For the, I want the bump set spike. Yeah, it's yeah. set for the spike. We can spike it. Yeah, set it up so that we can get it. Yeah. Uh, so that yeah. we can do the best by you guys. Um, yep. Yes, we are here for you. Oh, uh, Drew said in the very beginning, why are the New York City peeps much nicer than the L.A. peeps? It's not true. It's, it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. This is, this is play acting. We're better actors. Yeah. We're better actors than the L.A. peeps. Yeah. Yeah. We're too good for L.A. That's why. <laughs> anyway. Um, so that's going to conclude this live stream. There's going to be, again, we do one of these big higher thinking, higher level live streams once a month. The next one is the second Wednesday in no, October, November. So I'm not sure what day it is, but it's going to be the second Wednesday. And I think we're going to try to do it a little bit earlier, around 12 or 1 o'clock um, Eastern Standard Time. Um, these, This live stream, as well as all the other live streams we did, are available on our YouTube channel, Channel Fred Network, or YouTube.com slash Channel Fred Network. So you can always rewatch 
the amazingness that is these live streams. Um, you're more more than welcome to email us any additional questions you had or anything you didn't want to bring up to the whole um, the whole community. It's, that's what we're here for. We're here. We're honestly, we're really here for you guys. Um, uh, so yeah, just to answer Karin's animations question real quick, I am doing what I love. I love YouTube. I love helping people on YouTube. Um, I mean, money is a big part of it. I need to eat. I need to get paid. But I really like working here at Federator, and it's really fun to see to help grow all of your guys' channels and to help make you all better and more successful. That's me personally, but yeah. Cade, Nate, do you like working here? Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, I didn't think I would get a job from doing YouTube stuff for six years. Honestly, I was going to college, uh, getting a college degree, you know, and I figured I would be doing something in media. I didn't have any idea it would actually be in new media, um, and it's great. I love it. Yes. Nate. No. Oh, I, I mean, I, I love all things media, right? I'm a media guy, and I'm really into content and thinking about this. And I, I've told this anecdote before, but when I was in film school, I went to, um, I went to a, uh, a seminar, and it was about marketing. And none, no one else showed up at that seminar except one guy, one other guy from my classmates. 150 filmmakers, no one showed up to, the, to think about the seminar. And um, I realized, as I was thinking about why they didn't do it, is that they didn't value the fact that marketing was and promoting their their, car, their 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 shows was as important as making the show. Uh, and that's a big claim. But in most people's minds, this cartoon, this movie, this story, it starts the moment they hear about it. The moment they hear the title, they hear the premise, they hear who's involved. All that stuff starts going in their minds, and they're setting up, and they're creating expectations in their brains about what it is they're going to see and they're measuring and they're and excited. And that experience has started for them and it's important to be a part of that whole experience. Um, the other guy that was in that seminar, he produced Napoleon Dynamite. And uh, he got it. He, he figured that out. So anyway, I love this stuff. I'm happy to help you. I'm, in, I'm there for you individually. You know, just send me an email, let me know. Especially if you come to New York, we'd love to have you come in the office. And we're, we're happy to just sit and chat. And, uh, and talk things through. All right. So that's it, guys. Um, again, we have the next. Uh, it's a YouTube best practices hangout. I'm blanking on the date. Okay, do you know when the next YouTube best practices is? It's in the calendar somewhere. But anyway, um, it's in the uh, Google community calendar, so you can definitely check that out. Um, if you've already been to the YouTube best practices, you don't need to go again unless you have very specific questions you want to answer. I'll answer those right at the beginning, and then you can leave and go do your own thing, and I'll continue the YouTube best practices with people who haven't done it yet. But if you haven't done it yet, please, please do a YouTube best practices hangout. You'll learn a lot about how to run your channel and how to make it ready for those massive amounts of people that are coming from your social media eventually. So yeah, so I'm glad everyone came. And we will see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you.